Oh, please, 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 please stop making Resident Evil movies. Yeah. Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City stars Kaya Scatolario, Robbie Amell, Hannah John, Cayman, Donald Logue, and is directed by Johannes Roberts. What's up, guys? The year is starting to come to a close. We're in November. It is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. One movie that I was looking forward to seeing was Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. The last few Resident Evil movies are completely atrocious. But... And I was on Facebook today and I posted kind of a joke about you know, Jeff Goldblum, Jurassic Park, that's one big pile of shit. Some of the, the folks in there were saying, you're not a fan of the, the movies uh, or the games. I am not a game player at all. So I, obviously I don't play the games. I know a little bit about the, the games through watching the older movies. But at the end of the day, I'm a fan of the franchise, guys, okay? I really enjoy the first like three movies. I think they're really fun. I think the third one, Extinction, I have a poster of it. Not on my wall right now, but I just moved. But I think the third one is highly underrated, actually. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of the franchise. And going into this one, expectations-wise, I had high hopes because uh, after the last few movies that I thought were just dumpster barrel material, um, I was excited about a, uh, a darker approach, a different tone, and nothing against Mila Hovovich. I think she's a great actress. Check out the, the Joan of Arc movie she did. Phenomenal. Fifth Element, people, okay? Yeah, Mila Hovovich, great actress, but i kind of tired of her in the Resident Evil movies. I just am. I'm sorry. So I was really looking forward to this. I even posted on Twitter, guys, I haven't even seen this movie, and I know it's better than the last three. After seeing this... Not so sure right now, really. I'm, I'm still processing it. But uh, going into this, no, guys, I am a fan of the franchise. I really am. Also, before we go into this, um, my niece, Ashley. Hey, Ashley, how are you doing? Um, I'm giving a shout out to her daughter, Rogue, who happens to be a fan of horror movies. And she especially likes zombie movies. So, Rogue, this review is dedicated to you. Don't go watch Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You might like it. I don't know. But anyway, let's get into the review. Uh, this takes place in 98, which predates the original, but it's not really a prequel to the original. It doesn't tie into the original at all. Yeah, some of the same characters from the game and from the franchise are in this movie, like Jill Valentine, uh, like Leon, who my son, uh, who is kind of a fan of the games, he said Leon's like a big character in the, the games, especially like I think the second game. And we'll get into one of the big problems of this movie regarding him. There are tons of winks and Easter eggs. And hey, if you want to go into this movie just, hey, I'm looking for Easter eggs, then you'll probably be happy, okay? But if you're looking for a, a good story with characters that have depth and don't make stupid freaking decisions, this might not be the movie for you. But Kaya Scottilario plays Claire, her brother Chris, played by Robbie Amell. Uh, they are separated because when they were young, when they were kids, they were at the this Raccoon City orphanage, or at least she was. But I, I, I believe they were both separated at a certain point. And when she comes back into the picture, uh, you can tell that there's some tension there. Uh, they don't have the best sibling relationship. And I'll even say, diving into the cons, they're rarely ever together in this movie. You know, it's like she's trying to i don't know if she's even trying to get back to him they they split off and then she ends up going her own way fighting the the zombies whatever but her brother chris he's part of the police force best looking police force you could ever possibly imagine that's a, a staple of the franchise anyway they always have i guess you could call them pretty people not a, not a big deal doesn't bother me at all the, there are some different characters in this police department uh tom hopper plays wesker and if i could start with some pros i did see some big potential with this character yes we remember wesker from the the, the franchise i don't really know who wesker is in the games i do like this version of wesker better than what we've seen in the uh, previous movies before i think there was a lot of potential with this character i actually like the actor that played him and i will say the best part of the movie is the the last act there is a showdown between him and this doctor, Dr. Birkin, played by Neil McDonough. That's the one part of the movie that I did like. Another part that I did like is 
just visually, this mo this movie does look more like a horror movie than any of the other movies in the franchise. Honestly, I do like that that dark, edgy vibe, uh, especially the beginning part where we're getting introduced to Claire, and uh, she's in the rain. She she gets on this truck with this trucker. There is some nice, creepy stuff in that scene. And by the way, guys, Kaya Scalario. One of my favorite actresses working today. Another reason I had really high hopes for this movie is because of her. Loved her work in Crawl. Uh, she's in the Maze Runner movies. Check out a movie called Tiger House that she's in. Uh, that's one that I don't see talked about quite a bit, but uh, just a, a teenager stuck in a house and these robbers come in. A lot of fun in that movie, actually, but everything she does is really good. So I thought going into this, I was going to love her, but honestly, she doesn't get a chance to really do that much in this movie. She's not in the movie, I think, enough. And the, the moments that she is in, it's like they're trying to shoehorn in this badass role, kind of like, I guess, Alice. She hasn't really like done anything to earn it. Uh, at least they're not giving us enough of her background to make us feel like she's worthy of it. You know, everything, it just feels shoehorned in. And that's because of the superficial nature of the characters and really the plot. But getting back to the cops, again, major problems with this movie in the character department. Donald Logue plays the chief. He comes across as like a steamroller uh, with his subordinates, but then the guy just leaves and, uh, you know, just abandons ship. So then you got Leon. Remember I mentioned Leon, a, a favorite character in the game. Uh, he is th just the most idiotic, worthless cop ever. And yes, he is a rookie, but even rookies, they've been through some sort of training. They don't walk into the job just being a complete buffoon and moron or just uneducated, I guess. That's really what I'm, what I'm uh, trying to get at. And so he like follows the chief saying, you know, who's in charge? Which I get that, but Donald Logue, great character actor, and really he's pretty much just kind of wasted. But jumping back on Leon, uh, this is a character who my son said, I can't believe how they handled this character that uh, is a really great character in uh, some of the games. But in this movie, he's probably the biggest idiot. Definitely not somebody that you're rooting for. And there's a, a scene with him and a rocket launcher and he shoots the rocket launcher and there are characters literally like two feet from the creature that he's shooting uh, and not a scratch. And I was just rolling my eyes like, are you serious? But suspension of disbelief, by far the least of this movie's problems, okay? Now there was another scene of potential uh, you know that creature, I can't remember the name, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments, but it's probably the most popular creature in the in the movies, and the games. You see it pop up from time to time. Uh, I got the weird looking mouth and the, the tongue and all that. But there's a fight between that creature and I guess she was like an orphan and uh, they don't really follow through. You know, she saves the day in this one scene and then she's gone. I, I literally sat up in my chair. I was like, okay. This is a little bit of mystery. Who is this character? How is she gonna tie into the movie later? Nope. After that, cutscene. let's move forward and uh, fuck her, forget about her. And also, I gotta say, this movie's pretty boring. Like, I was really waiting for something to happen uh, at a point in this movie. It starts off kind of strong, like that scene in the rain with Claire. Uh, and even, you know, my, me and my son were like, oh, this, this looks like this could be pretty good. And then for like the next freaking 40 minutes, nothing really happens. You know, we're just following them, walking through. Uh, this building, but there's no build, there's no tension, and I think that's the problem. In a movie that's this dark and, and, and atmospheric, and it's very well lit, uh, there should be some great moments of tension and you know setting up scares, but they go for the cliche scares every time, the quick jump scares, or that that misdirect scare where you, you're you know one thing jumps out at you and then another thing pops you from behind. That happens like three times in the movie. One thing I was noticing was it made no impact on me whatsoever. I wasn't scared, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't get scared by movies that much, but I can tell when a scene is effective. I could point to like at least 10 movies that came out in like the last decade that have genuine scares in them, creative scares. That's what I'm looking for with scare scenes is creativity. Catch me off guard, this movie doesn't do that. And ironically, it tries that catch me off guard approach to the scares, but 
it's predictable. So I don't want to waste any more time on this movie. I, I'm, it's just a shame because I genuinely was looking forward to this, went into this with high hopes, thinking, okay, at least we're going to get like a middle of the road to maybe even like a four out of five movie out of this. You know, I was hoping and I just saw it happening. As I was sitting, you ever watch a movie, you're sitting there in your chair and then there's a certain point where you're like, oh shit. We got a bad movie. There's a certain point within the the movie, the runtime, where it hits you. It just hits you right in the head and it's too late and you just, we got a bad movie. No matter what they do at the end of this movie, we got a bad movie. And that's what happened with this for me. It just did not deliver whatsoever. And it's a shame because I'm such a Kaya Scottolario fan. I love her to death and she is just wasted in this movie, sadly. Johannes Roberts loved Stranger's Prey at Night. I think that movie is one of the most underrated slasher movies to come out in the last decade, but this just didn't deliver. So it's a shame, it's a shame. I gotta give it a two hours loss, okay? Two hours loss and uh, stop making Resident Evil movies. I guess that's all I gotta say. Maybe it's just the premise. Maybe we're tired because we see a lot of the same things in every one of these movies that we constantly see. So what else can you do, you know? Didn't even talk about the zombies. Uh, nothing new, nothing original, and really the zombies didn't do too much in this movie. And before I go, let me just tell you guys, there's a good chance that this could be, it's not as bad as Final Chapter, so it's not going to be last place, but it's definitely going to be maybe bottom three, maybe, probably bottom three for sure, actually, so yeah. So anyway guys, have you seen Resident Evil? Welcome to Raccoon City. Let me know in the comments. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We free for Fridays. Follow my Drum Dums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum Dum out.